If you ever find yourself in Minnesota and witness a pig covered in grease running past you, for the love of God, don't chase it. And don't you dare let your chicken cross the road in Georgia. These bizarre scenarios, it turns out, are entirely illegal. In fact, there are tons of strange laws out there that most people have never heard of. And as a result, there's a chance that you unknowingly break the law on a daily basis. So today, we're going to find out how criminal you really are by checking out crimes against fashion, bans on bellies, and even anti-grandma legislation as I lay down the law with some insane things you don't know are illegal. A sticky crime. Anyone who's met me knows that when I'm not chewing over incredible facts, I'm keeping my breath fresh by chewing on some gum. I always have some gum in my pocket, but if I bought a stick of the chewy stuff while on a trip to Singapore, I could be tried and sentenced in a court of law. Because chewing gum has been illegal in the country since 1992. This story starts in 1965, when Singapore became independent from Malaysia and elected their first prime minister, Lee Kuan Yew. Yu was very concerned with politeness and a bit of a clean freak, and once he was in power, he soon set about introducing strict laws against litter, graffiti, and spitting. Before long, Singapore's streets were spick and span, and the country's cleanliness became an important part of its cultural identity, as the government tried to turn the small nation into a perfect utopia. This lasted until the 80s when a rise in the popularity of chewing gum started to threaten Singapore's squeaky clean image. The problem became widespread as people started leaving their gum on sidewalks, walls, and trains in the country's brand new $5 billion transit system. It was a sticky situation for Singapore's government, and after chewing on the issue, they decided to make gum completely illegal to sell or purchase in 1992. From that point on, people caught with chewing gum were fined between $500 and $1,000, and store's owners found selling gum could be fined up to $100,000 or be sentenced to two years in jail. From 1992 onwards, the police were ever vigilant, listening out for reports of any active gummen armed with a stick of Wrigley's. But in 2004, it did become legal for people to chew therapeutic gum to help them quit smoking. However, this gum can only be obtained with a medical prescription, so if you travel to Singapore, you'll still have to leave your bubble gum at home. Sorry for busting your bubble. Contra Candy To Americans, banning chewing gum sounds pretty extreme, but it turns out Uncle Sam is a picky eater too. From deep dish pizzas to crawfish boils, Americans love food. But in 1938, the U.S. government put some limits on what citizens can legally eat in the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act. The act essentially banned companies from putting inedible objects inside food unless they were functional, like the stick on a lollipop. This has outlawed several products in the U.S., including the Kinder Surprise, which has been banned in America by default since its earliest manufacture in the 70s. This candy from Ferrero is composed of a chocolate egg containing a small plastic toy that the U.S. government saw as a choking hazard. You can buy Kinder Surprises all over the world. However, they're completely illegal in the States. And if you're caught smuggling them into the U.S., the only surprise you'll receive is a $1,200 fine per egg. Kinder has since found a way to get around the band with an alternative product in their range called the Kinder Joy, which keeps its toys separate from the candy. Unlike the Kinder Surprise, this U.S. government-approved snack contains chocolate cream and wafer balls instead of a chocolate egg. However, some diehard candy eaters in the USA weren't satisfied with this change and they were willing to break the law to get their hands on the original. Now, you might be imagining Kinder Surprise junkies meeting up with dealers in dark alleyways. However, these egg extremists actually order the candy from websites that illegally ship them to America and sell them for four times the amount they cost in Europe. U.S. Customs seized over 60,000 illegal eggs in 2011, and this trade has turned into a full-blown black market as customers order the illicit candy online and hide them in their homes. I know forbidden fruit tastes the sweetest, but I still think that's pretty extreme. Tight Collar Crime In Japan, you can legally eat Kinder Eggs, but the government doesn't want you to eat too many of them due to a peculiar and somewhat invasive law that was implemented to stop Japan's population from gaining weight. 
The Metabo Law is a piece of legislation that requires everyone between the ages of 40 to 74 to have their waistlines measured by their employer every year. Like Shakira, Japan's government knows that your hips don't lie. And if a man's waistline is measured to be above 33 and a half inches and a woman's is above 35.6, they'll be required to attend weight loss classes funded by their employer. While the law doesn't explicitly make obesity illegal, if a company repeatedly fails to reduce their number of overweight employees, they'll be subject to fines. And there are reports of big corporations receiving up to $19 million in fines for missing their targets. The rule isn't enforced frequently, so some companies aren't particularly strict about the law. However, Panasonic reportedly gives their employees MetaboCheck towels that come equipped with tape measure-like markings, allowing employees to keep track of their waistlines in the months leading up to their annual checkups. This sounds horrible, and I'm sure lots of Panasonic's employees have used their free towel to wipe up their tears as their bosses accuse them of being overweight. That being said, by comparison, I feel pretty lucky. My boss never calls me fat, wildly incompetent, morally bankrupt, a stain on humanity, sure, but never fat. Invisible criminals. If you're an outdoorsman, a hunter, or a pop star from 2002, you probably love wearing camo clothing. However, in some parts of the world, it's completely illegal to wear camouflage. And this crime against fashion could land you in jail like this guy. Hey, where'd he go? Uh, anyway, in 12 different countries, including Antigua, Barbados, and Jamaica, wearing any camouflage is seen as an impersonation of the military, so each country has placed a blanket ban on wearing clothes with a camouflage pattern. Some of these countries take the law incredibly seriously, and back in 2013, Granada's assistant commissioner of police confirmed that the country has a zero-tolerance policy on camo, and anyone caught wearing a camouflage pattern in any color could be fined $3,700 or jailed for a year. In Nigeria, the ban on camo extends to vehicles after the Army Color Act of 1977 made it illegal to own a vehicle painted in a color called Army Green. This ban came after criminals started dressing as soldiers and painting their cars green to pull over passing motorists and exploit them for money. To deal with the criminals, the government decided to ban these vehicles altogether and make it illegal for any civilians to own or operate an Army Green car. Now, realistically, you're not going to mistake a granny in a green sedan or an eight-year-old in a camo hoodie for hardened criminals, but these countries will still treat them as a potential threat as the police can round them up and charge them with a crime. If they can locate them in the first place, that is. Criminal Swine Let's move from the countries where camouflage is illegal to a place that's full of outdoorsmen dressed in camo clothing. Minnesota is known as the land of 10,000 lakes and it's famous for its beautiful landscape and wildlife. Minnesota's government cares a lot about their animals and their strangest law aims to protect the pigs that live in the state by making it illegal to organize or participate in a greased pig contest. Now, for those of you who don't know, a greased pig contest is a game played at county fairs where a group of contestants chase a greased up pig around and attempt to grab it. The game is great fun for the contestants, but as the pig runs away and squeals in fear, it probably isn't having such a good time. Minnesota's government decided that these contests were cruel, so in 1971 they specifically banned operating or taking part in a contest in which contestants try to capture a greased up pig. This statute had completely outlawed the contest, so if you attend a greased pig contest in Minnesota and someone calls the other pigs, your butt is bacon, and you could spend up to 90 days in jail with a $1,000 fine. This law aims to protect pigs, but other animal cruelty laws also help to protect people from nature. In Louisiana, the craziest reason that someone can go to jail isn't public intoxication on Mardi Gras. The state's wildest law is actually a ban on bear wrestling. With this law in place, you can kiss goodbye to your dreams of throwing on a singlet and attempting to body slam Louisiana's woodland creatures. Back in the 60s and 70s, bear wrestling was a popular sport in Louisiana as men battled against 700-pound bears in bars and county fairs. These matches drew in huge crowds until people started to realize that capturing a bear, removing its claws, and fighting it in a bar isn't particularly humane. As a result, Louisiana decided to ban the sport in 1992, and as other states followed suit, bear wrestling was almost unanimously banned in America, ensuring that if you body slam a bear in the ring, you'll end up in the slammer. Drink like a fish. 
Now that bear wrestling is illegal, American bars are forced to rely on pool, darts, and alcohol to entertain their patrons. Drinking like a fish is a long-standing tradition in America, but in Ohio, there's a famous old law that makes drinking with a fish illegal. This old Ohioan law explicitly makes it illegal to get a fish drunk. And the legislation has become legendary as several mainstream media organizations like Fox News and the BBC have reported on it. Now, this law is infamous, but unsurprisingly, it wasn't actually created to stop you from going bar hopping with your pet bike. The law was actually implemented as part of an act that fought against breweries pumping waste beer into rivers and intoxicating the animals in the water. And intoxication in this case is less in the drunk fun kind of way and more the fatal poisoning kind of way. The legislation allowed the government to fight against breweries that were polluting Ohio's wildlife with alcohol. However, the legislation has since been updated, and in 1973 it was replaced by a law that prohibits pumping waste of any kind into the state's rivers, lakes, and ponds. As a result, it's no longer explicitly illegal to get a fish drunk in Ohio. However, if you bring an aquatic friend to your local watering hole and order it a beer, you'll probably get some funny looks. So it's best to leave the fish in its tank. Smooth criminals. When it comes to flirting, I'm about as smooth as sandpaper. However, in Haddon Township, New Jersey, my lack of game could save me from a trip to jail due to an old law that makes flirting illegal. In Haddon, if you try your best riz on a stranger, you could literally be arisded. And the township's legislation specifically states, a person may not approach another person of the opposite sex in a public place and by word, sign, or gesture attempt to become acquainted with that person against their will. The law's ambiguous wording has left it up for interpretation, but most people note that if approaching someone of the opposite sex and attempting to become acquainted with them is illegal, then that essentially rules out pickup lines. Others have noted that the law's use of the term against their will places specific emphasis on consent, so it might have been created to target catcalling and harassment of people shouting suggestive comments at strangers who just want to be left alone. Either way, whether the law is there to prevent genuine harassment or harmless flirting, if you visit the Haddon Township, I would avoid practicing your best pickup lines, or you might pick up some criminal charges. Serpent Sermons Haddon's laws against flirting are thought to be a result of the area's traditional Christian roots, but it isn't the only place with laws that are rooted in religion. Appalachia is a large region of America stretching from New York State to Mississippi that's united by its beautiful mountains, traditional values, and total ban on an old Christian practice involving snake handling. In the Bible passage, Mark 16, 18, Jesus promises his disciples that if they spread the gospel, they'll be able to pick up snakes and drink poison without being harmed. This passage was relatively little known until 1910 when a Pentecostal minister called George Wendt Hensley introduced it to his ministry in Grasshopper Valley, Tennessee. Hensley told his flock that one day while doubting his faith, he climbed up a hill to pray. As he knelt down at the top of the hill, he saw a snake slithering in front of him. At this point, he claimed to have picked up the dangerous snake and carried it all the way back to his church without being bitten. Now, it isn't clear if this story is actually true, but from that point on, Hensley incorporated snake handling into his services by bringing snakes into church and asking his flock to prove their faith by holding the serpents without being bitten. Word of Hensley's sermon started to slither across Appalachia, and before long, other pastors in the region started copying him by testing their flock's faith with venomous snakes. As the ritual became popular, people started getting bitten leading to over 120 documented casualties from the practice. These fatal accidents prompted every Appalachian state to outlaw bringing snakes into church. Apart from West Virginia, whose state constitution doesn't allow any law to impede on a religious practice. The other states took the law very seriously, though, and in Georgia, snake handling was briefly made punishable by the death penalty after a child succumbed to a bite in 1941. Despite this ban, George West Hensley never stopped performing the rituals, and in 1955, he passed away after being bitten by a snake during a secret service in an abandoned building. After Hensley croaked, almost all of the illegal services quickly died out too. So the next time you want to take your pet snake to an Appalachian Sunday service, you'll have to leave it in the car. Just make sure you crack the window. The Right to Never Diet Appalachia is known for its stunning wilderness, but now it's time for us to travel to the concrete jungle and check out one of the most interesting laws in New York City. 
From 2002 to 2013, Michael Bloomberg served as the mayor of New York and he made it his mission to introduce a lot of health regulations to the city. Mayor Bloomberg increased the tax on cigarettes, encouraged New Yorkers to exercise, and introduced a law that required chain restaurants to display calorie information in their menus as he tried to persuade citizens of the Big Apple to trade burgers and fries for, well, Big Apples. Mayor Bloomberg's laws were supported by public health experts, but not everyone in America agreed with them. In Mississippi, officials argued that their citizens should be able to eat giant restaurant portions without being shamed by the menu. And a person's diet is none of the government's business. The governor was so outraged by Bloomberg's regulations that he passed a law nicknamed the Anti-Bloomberg Bill that specifically banned restaurants from displaying nutritional information on their menus, ensuring Mississippians never knew how many calories they were eating. I'm sure lots of Mississippians were pretty happy with this ruling. However, Mississippi has been repeatedly ranked among the worst U.S. states for healthcare and obesity. So the law definitely hasn't helped the state's public health. Still, they can always drown their hell sorrows in another helping of guilt-free mud pie, blissfully unaware of the calorie content. Mass Criminals Let's return to the Big Apple and look at one of New York's oldest and most unique laws. When I start talking about crimes against fashion, you probably picture someone wearing double denim or socks with sandals. However, some clothing-based crimes are a bit more serious. And in New York, it's been illegal to wear a mask in public since 1845. This law came about due to a number of violent protests in New York during the 1800s as farmers started donning masks and attacking policemen due to a drop in wheat prices. The government dealt with these riots by making it illegal to be disguised by unusual or unnatural attire or for groups of people to gather together while wearing masks. From this point on, wearing a mask in public was considered loitering, and the law was carried out as recently as 2011, when five people were arrested for taking part in a protest while wearing matching Guy Fox masks. Now, I'm technically cheating by including this law because the regulation was actually repealed in 2020 when it became necessary to wear a mask in public at all times. However, if it wasn't for the pandemic, this archaic law would still exist, preventing mask enthusiasts from covering their faces in New York. Thankfully, that's not the case, meaning the Be Amazed Mascot Mask Manhattan Meetup can go ahead as scheduled. See you all there. Auto Bond from Driving Let's fly from New York to Germany, a land known for sausages, beer, and luxury cars. German cars are known for their high speeds and drivers are able to test their limits on the Autobahn, a German highway that has sections with no speed limit. The highway is known for its lax speeding laws, but it isn't completely lawless, and people attempting top speed records on the Autobahn need to make sure to fill up on gas, because it's technically illegal to run out of fuel while driving on the road. While there isn't a law that explicitly says you can't run out of fuel, it's illegal to stop unnecessarily on the Autobahn for any reason that's deemed avoidable, and the government don't make any exemptions for people whose tanks are running low. The penalty for stopping on the Autobahn for longer than three minutes starts at $76. However, if you cause an accident in the process, you could receive an unlimited fine depending on the severity of the crash. As a result, if you end up driving through Germany in the future, you should probably keep an extra jerry can in your trunk because if you run out of gas and end up causing a collision, the police will pick you up and give you a free ride straight to court. No laughing matter. I learn a lot of incredible things while creating these videos, but the world is still full of age-old questions that we might never be able to answer. Like, why are we here? What happens when we die? And why did the chicken really cross the road? At some point or another, we've all been asked about that damn chicken. But if someone from the town of Quitman, Georgia ever asks you why the chicken crossed the road, you should throw them to the ground and call the cops, because they're clearly an accomplice to a serious crime. See, Quitman seems like an ordinary town, but it's actually one of the only places in the world where it's officially illegal for a chicken to cross the road. This might sound like a cheesy joke, but Quitman's legislation officially states that if you own any domestic fowl like chickens, it's illegal to allow them to run at large upon the streets or alleys of the city or to be upon the premises of any other person. The law is no laughing matter and it was created to ensure people keep their farmyard birds properly contained at all times and don't let them roam on public property. As a result, if you're a equipment resident who lets their chicken roam free, you should quit, man, or you'll be charged with a crime. The Poultry Police 
In Wisconsin, lots of people are forced to wear thick hats to fight against the cold in winter. However, the state reportedly has some laws about what type of headgear you're allowed to wear due to an infamous statute that prohibits you from entering the state while wearing a chicken on your head. That's right, the only place Wisconsin's government wants you to store your chicken is in a coop or on your plate. And this ludicrous legislation has received a lot of attention online as netizens have questioned why the law was passed or why a person would want to wear a bird on their head in the first place. As crazy as the law seems, it isn't particularly unique. In just one state over in Minnesota, it's reportedly illegal to enter with a duck on top of your head, making the border between the two states a bird-free zone. These laws are infamous in both states, and there are several articles online discussing them, often questioning whether the statute bans wearing live or plucked poultry as headgear. However, Minnesota's law library has weighed in on the issue, explaining that there's no evidence that either of these states has ever actually held these laws, and they're likely nothing but an urban myth. It would seem the same also applies to the Wisconsin chicken head law. It isn't clear how these myths started, but despite what countless online articles suggest, they do appear to be made up. So if you ever visit either of these states, you can feel free to put the chic in chicken and place any bird you want on your noggin. Banning bears. All this chicken talk has got me feeling pretty cooped up, so let's escape to the 100 acre wood and check out a law that concerns a very famous bear. Winnie the Pooh is one of the most beloved characters in the world, but not everyone is a fan. This became clear back in 2021 when the town of Tushin in Poland were choosing a cartoon character to become the mascot for a new playground. One council member innocently suggested using Winnie the Pooh, and to their shock, some of the members of the town's council were outraged. They stated that the bear was immodestly dressed and lacked a gender, dubbing him an inappropriate hermaphrodite due to his lack of trousers and missing male anatomy. As the council descended into chaos, one official kept the peace by stating that they'd use a Polish cartoon bear called Uzatek instead, noting that the bear was created in Poland and was fully dressed from the waist down. Now, Tushin's council decided to keep Winnie the Pooh off their playgrounds, but the ban wasn't actually written into law. In contrast, though, China's government has placed genuine legal restrictions on the cartoon bear. After people started making memes that compared Winnie the Pooh's appearance to China's president, Xi Jinping. Winnie the Pooh is a lovable character, but Xi still didn't take kindly to the comparisons, so the government placed a ban on certain depictions of the bear. Images that compare him to the character are completely outlawed, and in the Chinese version of the game Kingdom Hearts 3, Winnie was censored with a glowing white orb. The Chinese government take this law incredibly seriously, and in 2018, a Chinese college student was jailed for six months after sharing memes depicting President Xi as Winnie the Pooh. There's only one response for that. No oh, bother. Some people really can't take a joke. CSI Capri. We're gonna stay on the topic of poo now, moving from a cuddly yellow bear to a law that's based on genuine doggy doo-doo. Everyone stepped in dog poop at some point, but the government and Capri Italy want to make it a thing of the past by using one of their most unique laws to punish irresponsible pet owners. In Capri, there's a pre-existing law that requires every dog owner to have their pooch undergo a blood test to check them for diseases. This law was introduced to keep dogs healthy, but in 2011, Capri's mayor proposed using their database of dog DNA to perform tests on dog poop left on the island streets to help them identify the offending dogs behind the mess. The government's special unit of CSIs, or crappy sidewalk investigators, will use the long arm of the law to pick up offending dog poop before using it to track the dog's owner down and slap them with a $2,100 fine for not picking up after their canine friends. This law might seem extreme, but to be fair, tourism is one of Capri's biggest industries and nobody wants to go on vacation to an island that's covered in duty. Well, except dogs, probably. Canadian change. Let's move from a law that forces you to pick up your dog's poop to another statute that's based on politeness. In Canada, nothing's more important than good manners, and when you go shopping in the Great White North, the government has made sure you can inconvenience the country's cashiers by placing a legal limit on the number of coins that you can use for a single transaction. The Currency Act of 1985 states that you can use no more than 25 pennies, 100 nickels, 100 dimes, 40 quarters, 25 $1 coins, or $22 coins per transaction. 
transaction. If you use more coins than these said limits, then the vendor can refuse to accept them and the law was created to stop people from paying for expensive items with hundreds of coins and forcing retailer workers to count them. To those of us who don't live in the Maple Nation, this statuette seems pretty wacky, and we can just imagine the unbridled rage this must trigger in grandmas everywhere. However, when we look at what happens in countries that don't have this law, it starts to make sense. Back in 2015, an American student called Stephen Coyle was hit with a $110 ticket after illegally parking at the University of North Carolina. When it came time to pay the fine, Stephen decided to inconvenience the college by paying it with 11,000 pennies. Stephen visited several banks to collect the money, and when he brought it to UNCC's campus in five giant boxes, the parking officials were forced to spend three hours and 40 minutes counting the cash before accepting the payment, as it was all paid in legal tender. America's big bald eagle of freedom meant that Stephen's stunt was completely legal. However, his method of payment inconvenienced both the staff at the bank and the university and operated on a level of impoliteness that's officially illegal in Canada. Sorry about that, eh? After all this time, we'd like to officially introduce you to myself, Wesley, and Jay. We're the narrators here at Be Amazed, but we also know you guys tend to have a personal favorite for certain videos and topics. So, are you Team Wesley or Team Jay? Please click on the poll in the description to let me know. Well, it looks like you've served your sentence as we end our journey through the things that you didn't know were illegal. Which ludicrous law was your favorite? And have you committed any of these crimes in real life? Let me know in the comments below, and thanks for watching.